Hey guys, so a lot of you have been asking about convalescent plasma. The FDA recently issued an emergency authorization for doctors to treat COVID-19 using convalescent plasma from patients who have recovered from the disease. But researchers and doctors are concerned that this push to distribute convalescent plasma could undermine the clinical trials needed to determine whether it actually works against this coronavirus. In other words, people with COVID-19 might choose to access the treatment directly rather than sign up for a clinical trial and therefore risk being assigned to a control group that receives placebo instead of actual treatment. Now, in order to understand the science behind what is going on with convalescent plasma, we first have to understand what it is and how it works. Then I'm going to talk about my experience giving it to coronavirus patients and what the studies are actually showing. So let's get to it. So what is convalescent plasma or CPT? When someone is infected with COVID-19 and they recover, they then develop antibodies, typically within a few weeks. How long these antibodies last and how effective they are against the virus is a whole nother conversation. But these IgM and IgG antibodies are in the bloodstream when someone is recovered from the COVID-19 infection or actively going through it. So when a patient who is recovered from COVID that blood then gets spun, well, it gets drawn first into a tube and then it gets spun in a centrifuge and then collected. A certain portion of that blood is called plasma. And in that plasma are the immunoglobulins, including IgG and IgM antibodies. The rest of the blood, mainly red blood cells and platelets, is used for blood transfusions. So with the plasma that we collect, that's what contains the antibodies to the virus. And then we give that to hospitalized COVID patients. They did this for some patients with the first SARS virus and for MERS, and they had good results. Then in 2019, I'm sorry, 2009, there was an observational study of over 90 critically ill patients who had H1N1 influenza A. 20 of those patients received convalescent plasma. The ones who received the plasma did have better survival rates, but that's a very small sample size. Now, in theory, the COVID patients who would most likely benefit from CPT would be the ones who get the plasma as soon as they're diagnosed with it in the hospital setting. The sooner they get it, the higher the likelihood of it being effective, at least in theory. Also, the higher the number of antibodies in that plasma, the more likely it is to be effective, at least in theory. Although some US hospitals have already been given plasma for COVID-19 in special cases, an emergency use authorization from the FDA would make it easier to give it to more and more patients. So my hospital is part of a clinical trial for CPT and we've been giving it to COVID patients. Now, based on my experience, it's hard to know if it makes any difference at all. I can tell you that there's been not one patient who I've given it to and then all of a sudden they're magically better within a day or two or even three days. So I haven't really noticed much of a difference. I've given it to many patients and there've been good outcomes and bad outcomes and everything in between. For the patients who did improve, was this because of the CPT? Was it because of the dexamethasone they received or the remdesivir that they received or the tocilizumab that they received? Or was it just a coincidence and they're gonna get better regardless? Or is it some sort of combination of these things? It's impossible to know. The only real way to know if any of these treatments make any kind of difference is to have randomized controlled trials that involves lots of patients. So far, there've been no randomized controlled trials for CPT when it comes to COVID. Now, based on the published observational studies we have so far, there's little evidence to suggest that CPT actually helps patients with COVID in the hospital. Now, convalescent plasma has been tested only in small trials without the statistical power to provide firm conclusions. Another consideration is that convalescent plasma from different people varies widely in antibody concentration, meaning different amounts of antibodies. So one person might receive less antibodies compared to someone else. And on top of that, we don't even know how effective these antibodies are, meaning are these antibodies considered to be neutralizing antibodies? Now the Biomedical Advanced Research and Development Authority, or BARDA, in the US has provided convalescent plasma on this basis to more than 70,000 people, but this was done without having any control groups, meaning there weren't any randomized controlled trials. The FDA chief, Dr. Stephen Hahn, recently said in a tweet that CPT is associated with a 35% improvement in survival. This is absolutely wrong. He later corrected himself, saying the data so far show a relative risk reduction 
not an absolute risk reduction. But this statement is still not accurate. Why? Now, I'm not going to get into the biostatistics here, but the bottom line is you can't talk about relative risk reduction and absolute risk reduction unless it's a randomized controlled trial. And there is no randomized controlled trial that's been completed yet with respect to COVID and CPT. Now, I'll put a link in the description below to a good website that explains the basics of biostatistics as it pertains to relative risk reduction and absolute risk reduction. But Dr. Han is referring to this study, which was done at Mayo Clinic, where they transfused over 35,000 COVID patients with CPT. It's an observational study, not a randomized controlled trial. These 35,000 COVID patients, they didn't all have the same degree of illness. Some of them were hospitalized, but, not, but did not require ICU. Some of them required ICU, but not require a breathing tube with mechanical ventilation. Also, the patients had different patient characteristics, meaning some were young, some were old, some had more risk factors than others, such as obesity, diabetes, and high blood pressure and such. Also, some received dexamethasone and or remdesivir. So there's so many variables at play here, and that's a big reason why it's so hard to get concrete results from these studies. And that's why it's all the more necessary to have randomized controlled trials. But with all those things being said, let's take a look at this observational study of 35,000 patients. The seven-day mortality rate, meaning the percentage of patients who died within a week of being diagnosed, was 8.7% in patients transfused within three days of COVID-19 diagnosis. The seven-day mortality rate was 11.9% in patients transfused four or more days after diagnosis. What was the mortality rate of people who were given placebo? We don't know because this wasn't a randomized controlled trial. So all this is telling me so far is that the number is slightly better, not much better, slightly better in the group who got the plasma sooner. They also looked at 30-day mortality rate, which was 21.6% in those who got plasma sooner versus 26.7% in those who got plasma later. For patients who received plasma that contained high amounts of IgG antibodies, the seven-day mortality was 8.9% compared with those who received low amounts of IgG plasma levels, that mortality rate was 13.7%. So this study suggests that both earlier time to transfusion and higher antibody levels help to slightly reduce mortality, keyword being there, suggests. So if you wanna prove it, you have to do a randomized controlled trial and calculate the real risk reduction. But the FDA cited data from this non-peer-reviewed observational study and claim there's a 35% mortality reduction. It's just flat out wrong. That's not what this study is saying at all. That's just bad science. The good news is that overall, CPT is very safe and side effects are rare. The two most common side effects that can occur are transfusion-associated circulatory overload, or TACO for short, as well as transfusion-related acute lung injury, or TRALI. TACO occurs when the body cannot handle a sudden large volume of blood transfusion in which the body becomes volume overloaded. Typical symptoms include shortness of breath as a result of fluid that builds up in the lungs. Trolley is an immune reaction that occurs when antibodies from the donor's blood, meaning the donor's plasma, has a reaction toward the recipient's body. The most common scenario in this context is when antibodies against human leukocyte antigens, or HLA, develop in women who've had multiple pregnancies. This is the reason why the FDA advised against women who've been pregnant before from donating convalescent plasma for the COVID-19. Trolley, just like TACO, typically causes shortness of breath. Other potential complications of CPT include transfusion allergic reactions. So this can be in the form of rashes and anaphylactic reactions. But again, all of these potential adverse effects are rare. In a published study of 5,000 hospitalized COVID patients who received CPT, there were 36 serious adverse events. So 11 of those were trolleys, seven of those were tacos, and there's also three reports of severe allergic transfusion reactions. So the rate of serious adverse events is actually less than 1%. And the overall takeaway from this video is that this recent announcement about CPT being a major advancement in the treatment of COVID patients is nonsense. We need randomized controlled trials to know if it truly helps hospitalized COVID patients. Based on the observational studies we have so far, and based on my personal experience, this isn't some game changer therapy. The randomized controlled trial may end up showing that it helps with COVID, similar to what dexamethasone does, but unfortunately, I seriously doubt it'll be anything more than that.